Hi everybody and welcome back to AP Chemistry. My name is Jeremy Krug and in this video we're going to be wrapping up Unit 5 which is all about catalysts. Now there are different types of catalysts and the way they work can be a little bit different. We have surface catalysts, we have other catalysts, but for the most part we can say that a catalyst is going to speed up a reaction without being consumed in the process of the reaction. So let's take a look at a very typical uh, mechanism here, kind of like we saw in the last video. And it says using the mechanism below, part A, write the overall equation for the reaction. Part B, identify the reaction intermediate. Part C, identify the catalyst. And part D, determine the rate law of this reaction. So once again, we're going to add these two elementary steps together, and that's going to help us see what the overall equation is. So there are a few things we can cancel as we're adding these together. You can see that we can cancel out the IO negative. So that can be canceled. I also see that this I negative on both sides can be canceled as well. So once I've canceled those out, now I'm ready to add the two elementary steps together and get the overall equation. So I have two molecules of hydrogen peroxide, H2O2, and then I have two molecules of water and one molecule of oxygen gas. So I can add that together there. And so that's part A, the overall balanced equation. Now part B is identify the reaction intermediate. Now, like we said in the last video, a reaction intermediate is a substance that's produced in an early step that's used up in a later step. And so, to me, that seems to be IO negative. That is the reaction intermediate. So we can uh, make a note of that. Now, part C says identify the catalyst. Now, a catalyst is different. A catalyst is something that's present at the beginning of the reaction, it's also present at the end of the reaction. So it's not really consumed over the, the course of the reaction. And to me, it looks like the catalyst is this I negative, the iodide ion. It's present at both the beginning and the end, but it's never consumed. So the iodide ion here is acting as our catalyst. Now, it's interesting that the catalyst does actually participate in the reaction mechanism, doesn't it? So this, this iodide ion is actually found in part in that reaction intermediate, isn't it? That's, I mean, that's part of the IO negative, so it actually does participate. And we can see that the catalyst you know, starts out, it's somehow used in the process, but it ends up being spit out at the end of the mechanism. So that's our, our, uh, our catalyst. Now part D says determine the rate law of this reaction. So just like we learned in our last video, the slow step is the one that determines the rate of the reaction. And so the slow step is step one. And so we have rate equals K times H2O2 times I negative. And so there we have the rate law for this catalyzed process. And so we can write the rate law just like that. Now, we have to remember that this is a process that is catalyzed. It's possible for this chemical reaction to take place without the catalyst. And so what if the catalyst isn't present? It is possible for hydrogen peroxide to decompose on its own without the catalyst present. It just takes a lot more time for that to happen. Well, if that were the case, then most likely the rate law would be the same, except the iodide would not be there. And so it would look like this, rate equals K times hydrogen peroxide. But if there is a catalyst there, then it's certainly okay to put that iodide in there as part of the rate law. Now, let's take a look at a couple more questions here as we wrap up unit five. Uh, part A gives us a reaction mechanism, and it says, first of all, write the overall equation for the reaction. And then part B says, which of the two elementary steps in this process would you expect to occur at a faster rate? And explain your answer. So once again, we have this two-step mechanism. All we have to do is add these together. So we want to cancel out what can be canceled out. And so we have AB on both sides, so that's going to be out. I also see a molecule of a B that can be canceled on the left and right sides here. So the overall equation is going to be A plus B plus C yields ABC. So that's our overall equation. Now, 
Part B says which of the two elementary steps in the process would be faster? Well, notice that step one is a bimolecular step. That means it has two molecules reacting with each other. That's fairly typical in an elementary step. However, step two is a termolecular step. That means it has three molecules reacting at the same time. And that's actually quite rare. In fact, we can say that step one is going to be the faster step because it is a bimolecular step. These termolecular steps, like we see in that second step there, are very rare. And if they do take place, they tend to be quite slow because they require three molecules to collide in the exact orientation and at the exact same time and with enough energy. And that's highly unlikely as it turns out. So the fact is that step two is most likely going to be the slow step and step one is going to be the fast step. Now, let's take a look at one other example here. We have another a uh, pair of reactions this time. It says, consider the slow steps from two different chemical reactions given below. Which of the two processes will have the faster rate? And explain your answer. Well, it comes down to the rate constant. The fact is, whichever reaction has the higher value of the rate constant, that's going to be the one that's faster. So we can see here that reaction two has a rate constant of 9.5 times 10 to the negative third reciprocal molarity, reciprocal seconds. And so since that's the larger of the two rate constants, that's the one that's gonna be faster. Whichever reaction has the higher magnitude of its rate constant, that's the one that's gonna be faster. Hey, I hope you enjoyed this video. Hope you learned so something from it. If you did, then consider giving me a thumbs up. I would really appreciate it. And if you want some wonderful AP chemistry practice, not just for unit five, but for all nine of the units, consider going over to ultimatereviewpacket.com and checking out my comprehensive review and practice program to get you ready for the AP chemistry exam. It's a great deal. I have complete review summary videos for all nine units. I have multiple choice practice. I have free response practice, uh, hundreds of practice questions that you can work through and get yourself ready to score that five on the AP chemistry exam. Thanks for watching. Hope to see you in the next video.